Hello and welcome to Darkside Scenics. This diorama was designed by my youngest daughter and is based on the type of house she would love to have one day. There are a huge number of these cottages in Devon where we live so we did our best to create something similar. This is quite a long video as there are a lot of kits and techniques involved but hopefully there's something interesting for everyone. I have to move between parts quite frequently but I've tried my best to keep each section together. If you have any questions please leave a comment below. If you like the videos please subscribe as it will help me to grow the channel and hopefully produce more videos. This basic timber frame is just over 60 centimeters on either side and it's topped off with a bit of plywood. Some offcuts of Celotex are glued to the top of the plywood with some Gorilla Wood glue. And MDF is attached to the sides to give a clean edge. With a knife I cut the rough shape of the land and just take away any sharp edges. I didn't have quite enough sculpt mold to cover the entire diorama so I used it to fill some gaps and smooth off some of the rough edges. While the sculpt oil is drying I use some polyfiller to cover the screw heads. The raised platform is for a greenhouse and then the hole here is for a duck pond. The position of the house and the roads are roughly drawn out to ensure everything fits where it needs to. I had plenty of moulder seen in stock so that's what I decided to go with. Similar to sculpt mould, you just need to add water and mix. It's spread in a thin layer over the entire diorama and creates a really good base for your scenery. While it's drying, I like to use a small amount of soapy water to ensure a smooth finish. And that's left to dry while I sand off the polyfiller on the edges. This is just a cheap black acrylic paint as a first coat. This simple grey acrylic mix gives a good base colour for the road. When the paint is dried, it's time to use the matte Mod Podge to add the earth texture. This is my usual mix of brown tile grout and Woodland Scenics Fine Turf. The excess is brushed and then vacuumed off the road before spraying some scenic cement. A quick spray of soapy water before the scenic cement just helps break the surface tension. After approximately 24 hours everything's fully dry and it's time to start on the dry stone walls. I go into more detail on one of my other videos, but it's basically a generous helping of Woodland Scenic Scenic Glue followed by some WWS stones, which are light grey medium. The 
By the time I've reached one end it's fairly dry so I can start at the other end with a new layer. These are scale model scenery gates and are just helping me to ensure that the gap size is correct. After approximately 7 or 8 layers of stones I just add a few around the edges as if they've fallen off the wall. So the base road texture is created using Humbrol Satin Coat and a Pico road texture. The Satin Coat has quite a long working time so I've covered the entire road and now I'm just sprinkling on the road texture. And to help with even distribution, I'm just brushing more of it over the top. My daughter had the idea of an old metal frame greenhouse which was rusting slightly, so this kit from Wills was perfect. The cutting tool does a great job, but there's often a small amount of filing or sanding needed. The entire kit is put together with this extra thin cement from MIG. This is polyfiller being rubbed into the brickwork of the cold frames. Some Woodland Scenic's fine turf is added to the bottom of the cold frames, ready for the plants and the lid. A quick spray of soapy water and then some Woodland Scenic's Scenic Cement. Before adding the plastic as glass, I'm just giving this a quick spray of white primer. and then a white acrylic is brushed over the entire model to take away the brand new plastic look. I had some really nice empty plant pots from Knock, so I just needed to add some plants. This is a few strands of grass glued together and then dipped into some Woodland Scenic's yellow flower texture. Once the plant is glued in place, I add some Woodland Scenic's fine turf into the pot. The greenhouse needs to be a bit messy, so I'm gluing in some Woodland Scenic's fine turf and also some fine gravel. And then the pots can be attached. a quick spray of scenic cement and then some more gravel and dirt. This is a light brown acrylic wash which tones down the white. When it's dry I can move on to cutting out the plastic packaging for the glass. As with the rest of the kit it's attached using extra thin cement. And with the interior finished I can add the roof. These small pieces of sea foam are sprayed with layering spray and then some green scatter is sprinkled over the top. When they're dry they're trimmed down to size and then glued into the cold frames. When I was happy with that I attached the lid with extra thin cement. For the rust effect I'm using a small amount of the Humbrol Satin Coat and some rust weathering powder.
So I haven't tried this before, but this is dashed stone clay. And with it, I'm creating some very small paving slabs. I need to create enough of these for a pathway leading up to the house and also a patio at the rear. They were dry the next day, so I started to use them to create the pathway. While the pathway was drying, I created a brown grey acrylic wash for the stone walls. This is enough to give the stone a weathered look and then I'll add some moss later on. More of the slabs create a path up to the greenhouse and around the duck pond. I had to carve out a small amount of the earth to create steps leading up to the front gate. The earth texture I used earlier is brushed in and around all the stones to help them blend in. After ensuring the tops of the stones are not covered in the texture, I spray it with soapy water and then some scenic cement. I still have a large box of dead thyme from the garden and it's great for creating hedges. I cut them down into similar sizes until I have enough. Initially, I drill the holes and just place them there to ensure I have the correct amount. When drilling, some of the sellotex comes to the surface, so just needs a quick vacuum. Now I'm happy with the position, I can add some scenic glue and fix them in place permanently. To cover the holes and the glue, some more of the earth texture is sprinkled over the top. This is Javis Dark Earth Scatter to add some variety. And finally, some Pico Woodland Ground Cover. Again, I give it a quick spray of soapy water and then some scenic cement. My daughter chose these figures from fine scale as she was happy with the resemblance of the girl and also she wanted a lot of animals. They are all given a quick spray of acrylic primer and left to dry. I haven't painted many of these figures before but I started off with the rabbits. Most of the figures can be gripped the tweezers while being painted. For those which couldn't, I put a small amount of hobby tack on top of a lid and it was just tacky enough to hold the figures while I painted them. I picked up some spaniels and some sheepdogs, but ultimately it was the spaniels which were chosen. It was actually really enjoyable painting these figures and hopefully I'll get better as I do more.
We ordered some gnomes which were painted in very vivid colours and some geese for the pond. When all of them were fully dry, they were given a very light black wash to pick out the details. As this scene is part of a small village, we decided a parish notice board would be a nice touch. This kit's from Scale Model Scenery and is really easy to put together. Rocket card glue works really well to put these kits together. This is the version I'll be using on the diorama, but there are several other options included. I need a small amount of the fencing from this kit and also the public footpath signs and the style. Similar to the parish notice boards, there are printed sections to glue to the kit. Each part is glued onto the front and the back to give the illusion of fence posts and rails. These are the public footpath signs which are super glued to the metal wire included. A small amount of superglue activator speeds up the process. This second fencing kit works really well on hillsides. It's much easier to paint them before they're removed, so here I'm using a brown umber wash. You can use a cutting tool here, but some of them snapped off quite easily without it. Some evenly spaced holes were drilled and then they were fixed in place with some scenic glue. Some of the earth texture was added around the base to cover any gaps. And it's another spray with some soapy water followed by some scenic cement. I had to make some more paving stones so quickly glued them into position in between the fencing jobs. This is fine gravel for the greenhouse floor. One of the requirements was to have a small white picket fence around an allotment area. There are several types of fencing in the kit, but no gates, so I just quickly made one from the existing fence. The masking tape helps to keep the fence in position. The non-stick baking paper means I don't have to worry about being messy with the extra thin cement.
Each fence post is marked out with a hand drill before spraying it with a white primer. As with the greenhouse, I used a light brown wash to tone down the colour. This area was supposed to be a small tarmac lay-by, so I had to correct my mistake and add some of the road texture. Next I'm using some basing glue and some WWS 2mm European grass. I work in small sections, first of all doing the track in the middle of the lane. This is one of the most rewarding parts of the diorama because it really brings it to life. I'm always careful not to add too much grass and also leave a few gaps so the earth texture can show through. When that's dry the excess can be vacuumed. You can usually reuse the grass that has collected in the vacuum. For some variation in the grass the layering technique is really important. This is WWS 4mm patchy. Back to the patio area, I'm using some of the road surface texture to brush in between the stones. After spraying with soapy water and then followed up with some scenic cement, it needed some colour on it. This is a grey brown acrylic wash. Now the grass is done, I can add the wiring to the fence. There are four pre-drilled holes in each post, so it's just a case of feeding through the wire. A very small amount of super glue is added at both ends to hold it in place. This is rubberized horsehair, which I find really good for making hedges. It's cut into strips and then gently teased apart. The edges can be quite solid so these parts can be discarded. The green colour is quite bright so I'm using a washable earth acrylic through the airbrush. This is a very basic airbrush which I picked up recently but I've been really pleased with the results. It's given a spray with some aerosol layering spray and then followed up with various green scatters.
I often find the layering spray doesn't hold all of the scatter so it's worth spraying with some scenic cement afterwards. After leaving them overnight to dry it's time to fix them in place. The scenic glue is added quite generously before adding the horsehair over the top. Turning my attention to the allotment, I need to create some raised beds. This is 1.5mm card and then matchsticks are glued to the top. To create the colour I'm looking for, I'm using some black and brown acrylics. I've had this shed for quite some time so I used a slightly lighter wash on the woodwork. Before adding any plants to the raised beds I need to add a base layer of fine turf. and then a generous spray of soapy water and scenic cement. A small amount of scenic glue is brushed onto each fence post to hold it in place. Extra thin cement is brushed on to join each corner. Some earth texture and some green fine turf are sprinkled under the fence to cover the gaps. This fine gravel is approximately where the path will be in between the raised beds. To avoid dislodging some of the fine scatters, the soapy water and the scenic cement has to be sprayed on in a fine mist from a height. I've had this kit for some time and I thought it was a perfect opportunity to use it. Any rough edges are filed or sanded off and then the kit is stuck together with extra thin cement. It's given a light spray of grey primer before moving on to adding textures. Polyfiller is mixed with water and then stippled on with a brush to create the stone effect. Some brown, grey and black acrylic paints are mixed into a wash before being brushed on. There's a bench in the kit which is given a light brush of burnt umber. The fence is painted with burnt umber acrylic and then left to dry. The same colour is used on the styles and the gates.
As this is the front gate of the cottage, I'm giving it a coat of white acrylic paint. Some small holes are created before fixing the gateposts in place with some scenic glue. The post and the gate have some very small hinges which can be glued together in the open position. And the same is done for the white front gate. Now I'm happy with their position, I can glue the cold frames and the greenhouse in place. I managed to break the fence where I'd created a join, but it was quite easy to fix. This is where the public footpath sign and the style will be added. And a second sign pointing up the lane. This is a small amount of earth texture to create some wear where people would climb over the fence. Like the other fences, some brown or green scatter is used to cover the holes. The memorial, the bench and the trough can now be glued into place. parish notice board and a post box are put into position and this will be followed by a phone box later on. I'm going to make the cottage from some 1.5mm card. I picked these windows up from eBay and then just used them as a template to cut the holes in the card. The doors are provided by the same company. To speed up the process, I use super glue to attach the sides to the base. There will be a chimney at either end of the cottage, but I'm making them slightly oversized because I'm not sure at this stage how thick the thatch will be. The same card is used to create a chimney for either end. Matchsticks are cut down to size to create a lintel and a sill for each window. At this stage I wanted to get some colour on the lintels so I've just created a dark brown wash. The sills are given a coat of white acrylic which will blend in with the windows. Some thin strips of card are glued onto the inside to create a ledge for the roof to sit on.
This is a card base for the roof which will be kept separate for the time being. The reason for keeping them separate is that I was fairly confident that at least one of them would go wrong. To create the cottage render I'm spreading polyfiller over the entire model. I don't want the finish to be too smooth but I'm just working out some of the rough parts with my finger which has been dipped in soapy water. While the polyfill is drying I use the time to create some chimney pots from this building detail kit. It's just a case of gluing the two halves together. Due to the plastic look I painted them with a terracotta acrylic mix. After the windows are painted with white acrylic, the plastic packaging is cut to size and used as glass. The polyfiller leaves a bit of a messy edge so I'm just gently filing the window sections. I'm finishing the roof template I started earlier and adding some supports to ensure it keeps its shape. Now I'm happy the windows fit correctly, I'm fixing them in place with scenic glue. And that's followed by the chimney pots. Moving on to the thatch, I thought I'd try paintbrush bristles. A small amount of bristles are glued together and then left to dry. The idea was to add some scenic glue and then build them up gradually. I was hoping that when they're dry I would be able to use sharp scissors to blend the layers. I added some individual bristles to try to get the blend right but I was still not happy with it. The basic shape and the thickness was okay so I put on some layering spray and then added some static grass. This is 2mm grass from WWS which I'm going to spray later. I'm starting to feel slightly happier with the look of this but there's still some work to do. As it's static grass it's standing upright so I'm giving it a quick spray of scenic cement. And then a paintbrush is very gently rolled over the top to ensure the grass is pointing in the right direction. To do the ridge I'll need a card template to avoid grass getting on the rest of the roof. The aerosol layering spray is put on again, followed by some static grass. I had a feeling this ridge pattern would be quite tricky, but I had some swamp reeds from WWS. I cut them to size with a scalpel and then placed them on the ridge.
The thatch is already quite tacky because of the layering spray, but I'm putting on some more scenic cement to make sure they stick. The edges are tidied up with some sharp scissors ready for painting. I wanted the thatch to have an aged look, so I'm mixing some sand yellow and some dark tracks. You can see from the size that it's quite thick, so it was probably worth using the paint bristles underneath. The windows are quite small, so it's not worth putting detail inside the cottage. However, there will be a small light inside, so I'm just painting it black to avoid it looking like an empty box. My instructions were to create a pink cottage, so I'm just watering it down so it's not too vibrant. This is just a base coat and I'll be going over it again with a duller version of this mix. The inner ridge created earlier is covered in scenic glue before the thatch is added permanently. A very small amount of washable earth and ghost grey is added to the mix to tone down the pink. The humble satin coat and some black weathering powder creates some soot on the chimneys. This is an army green weathering powder from MIG which is used sparingly to create streaks. This is one of the sea foam trees I grew in the garden last year. To create a slightly thicker trunk, I'm just running some super glue down it and then spraying it with activator. This is built up in layers. Rather than use the airbrush, I had some olive drab and grey spray paint to use up. Layering spray is added to the edges of the tree, being careful not to get any on the branches or trunk. And various green scatters are sprinkled on in layers until I'm happy with the result. I wasn't too happy with the colour of the trunk, so I just added a brown wash over the top. After a small hole is created, some scenic glue is added and then the tree can just be pushed into place. Earth texture and some brown scatter help the tree blend into the ground. A final spray of scenic cement helps all of the scatter stay on the tree. There will be some lights on the diorama, with one of them being in the shed. Here I'm just adding some sleepers to the bottom. The LED for the shed is very small, I'm adding the same one to the phone box. This phone box didn't come with any glass, so I'm just putting in some plastic packaging before I glue the LED in. Although you probably wouldn't get these Gage Master lanterns in the scene we're creating, we thought they'd be a nice touch. For the lighting, I'm using a Gage Master kit, an Expo switch, a 9 volt battery holder, some Pico wire, and some wire cutters. The Gage Master circuit board has two separate outputs one for LEDs and one for the lamps. I was very lucky to get a hot air gun for Christmas, which makes the heat shrinking much easier. The 
The battery holder, the switch and the board are all soldered together, ready for the lighting. This really isn't my strong point, but at the end everything was tidy and working correctly. Now the lighting's working, I can fix everything in place, starting with the cottage. The gaps are filled in with more of the earth texture. I made these grass tufts some time ago, I'm just tipping them with scenic glue and then dipping them in some purple flowers. The lavender plants will be placed all around the patio and the front and rear of the cottage. Sam at Peaks47 did a really good video recently on flocking sheep. I'd recommend popping over to look at his video to see how this is done properly, but it's basically a small amount of basing glue added to the sheep. 0.5mm WWS snow mixed with beige 1mm which I didn't have, but this did the trick. When it's mixed fully, the basing glue can be added to the sheep and then placed over the static grass box. If I did this again, I'd make sure I had the correct beige mix and mix it 50-50 as Sam suggested. The washing line is created using two matchsticks painted white and then some thread is glued onto the top. I'd measured the distance between the two posts to ensure the thread was tight enough. A very small piece of balsa wood is cut out and then a needle and thread is used to create a rope swing. To give the illusion of tension I put a clamp on it and then coated it with scenic cement and left it overnight to dry. I had a small amount of WWS resin to use so I thought that would be perfect for the duck pond. The two parts are measured out on the scales before being thoroughly mixed. I want the pond to look quite dirty so I'm mixing burnt umber with some dark green. Once it's mixed thoroughly, it can be gently poured into the pond area. I also added a small amount to the trough by the memorial. The washing line is glued into place, making sure that the thread is tight. The rope swing is glued onto the tree using super glue. The front gate needed a slight amendment as I'd left a diagonal piece which shouldn't have been on there. In its place I used a small amount of balsa wood to create a cottage sign. There are a few areas that were looking too clean so I used a light black enamel wash on the fencing around the allotment and also the washing line posts. And now it's time to add some bushes, I'm using Woodland Scenic's light green fine leaf foliage.
I was happy with the texture of the road, but the colour was too light, so here I'm just brushing on some black weathering powder. I really like these bushes, but they can look a bit odd if they're not blended in properly. I use a variety of mainly brown and some green scatters around the edges of the bush. So now it's time to work on the three raised beds of the allotment. I'm using wire for the runner bean canes and just bending it out of shape so it doesn't look perfectly straight. When I've cut enough pieces of wire, I'm putting a small amount of dust clay in the bottom of the raised beds. This helps to keep the wire in place when I'm gluing it together. When the five triangles are put in place, there's one piece that goes through the centre of each one. A small amount of superglue is applied with a cocktail stick, followed by a superglue activator. The colour I'm using is washable earth and it's thinned down slightly before spraying. I'm already happy with the colour of the edges of the raised bed so I've just masked those off. and then the scenic glue is added over the entire base for more earth texture. Some soapy water followed with scenic cement to make sure this sticks correctly. I covered some very small pieces of sea foam with some Gage Master leaves. These are glued to the ground and the canes to show them climbing. The final raised bed is going to have some very low plants created with static grass. The plants need to be low because we're going to have rabbits invading the allotment and it will make it easier for them to be seen. One of the many requirements was to have a bike in the garden, so I've just picked this one up from Pico Model Scene. And this boat from Scale Model Scenery, which will sit next to the pond. Dry stone walls need a bit of moss on them, so I'm using some scenic glue here, followed with some Woodland Scenics fine turf. Once it's been stuck to random places on the wall, the excess is vacuumed up. The same moss effect is used between some of the paving stones. I already had some polyfiber which I'd spray painted. This is used to create the ivy growing up the side of the cottage. It's sprayed with layering spray followed with some Gage Master leaves. A final spray of scenic cement to make sure the leaves don't fall off. The ivy is stuck on using scenic glue. A table was needed for the patio at the back of the cottage, so I picked this kit up from South Devon Railway. They also recommended this glue, which was really easy to use.
These kits look a bit new, so I put some black wash over the top to weather it down. The earth texture on the raised beds is dry now, so they can be fixed into place. A few areas needed some static grass, so I used some WWS 2mm dead grass. and the allotment required some more fine gravel around the raised beds. The Morris Miner had a very subtle dust effect sprayed onto the side and the front. Adding these final details is one of the most enjoyable parts. The bike is glued in place leaning against the wall of the front garden. The sheep are added in the field next to the cottage. An asbestos sheet is glued behind the shed. A wheelbarrow is added with some garden tools. This figure represents my daughter outside her cottage with the two spaniels she would also like. Having an old milk churn outside a cottage seems very fitting. The boat is added next to the pond and another piece of asbestos is put in the corner. I managed to snap the legs off these geese when I was painting them, so I trimmed the base a little bit more so they could be sat on the pond. Two gnomes are added next to the pond and there are two in the boat. These geese managed to keep their feet so they were allowed to stay in the garden. I made up some more of the pots I used in the greenhouse to scatter around the garden and in the allotment. I managed to find a thin piece of material to act as a blanket on the washing line. And this is where the rabbits find a way into the allotment. And the table is glued to the patio. The pond needs some light ripples created by the geese, so I'm just brushing on some gloss Mod Podge. When that's done, I blow through a straw to create the ripple effect. When that was dry, I took the diorama to Berry Pomeroy for some final photos. Thanks for watching.